Hi guys, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and welcome to unit two of our Unlocking Minor Cage course, okay? And what we're gonna be doing in this unit is tackling the next cage chord shape along, which is the D minor shape. Now in this lesson, I'm gonna be introducing you to the chord and the various ways to play this chord and what I think are the best ways to play this chord, of course, uh, as well as the arpeggio, okay? And again, there's a bunch of different ways you can play that or you can use that, but we're gonna make it really practical for you, really, really fun. So pick up those guitars and let's get started. Hey there guys, if you've just joined us then don't forget that you can get all the write-ups, the tab, the fretboard diagrams and everything else over on the website absolutely free and the link will be below in the description. If you're watching us here on YouTube absolutely free then please do like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave us a comment. We do our absolute best to get back to every single question that you guys have about the course. Okay then guys, so let's go through this chord. Now again, we're gonna be learning in A minor to start with, okay? Everything we're gonna begin with A minor because that's the first chord of the track that we're working with, okay? Now, when we're dealing with the D shape chord, we need to know where the root note is on the D string. So if you've already covered the major cage course, you'll know this, and that's the beauty of doing these courses in order, um, that you will already know this bit, so this will feel extra easy to you at this point, which is very, very good. Uh, if you haven't, one, I highly recommend doing so. Uh, and secondly, we need to do that little octave method. So if you've got your root note on the E string of A, which you all know where it is now, off by heart, of course, you can now do a little octave, which is down two strings and across two frets, and you've got the root note on the D string. And still to this day, when someone asks me to find the root note or I need to find the root note on the D string, I do that very quickly. In my mind, if someone says to me, right, find a B, I do that. Of course, it's a split second, so it feels like, and it looks like I could just go, where's the B? There. But actually, I'm going there, there. Where's the F sharp? There. Because I went like that. Where's the C sharp? There. Okay, so. That's how I would recommend doing it, but it's, it's up to you. If you just want to learn the notes on that string, absolutely off pat, then, then go for it. Um, as long as you can get to it like that. So I'm on an A here. And the chord shape is going to look like this. And this is one of my favorite, favorite chord shapes. And I'm going to let you into a little uh, backstory here, a little reason why. When I first started playing the guitar, um, I was at... I was in college and a guy who was an incredible guitar player at the time, exactly my same age, but so much more advanced than me, um, he, he showed me this chord shape. And I wrote my first ever song, ever, ever song, using this cage chord shape. And, it's, and it, I can't remember all of it, but I remember the first two chords were simply this. <laughs> and, then I, and then it's all just gone blank. But I just remember always going, a minor, A minor, E, basically. And then it was something. Wh whatever it was after that. But I have a fondness about this uh, chord shape because we even went on and recorded that song. It was awful. It was so bad. But I don't know. At the time, it was magical. I thought I'd created something amazing because no one was using this cage chord shape. If someone wanted to play A minor, they were going... You know, they were doing that, everyone around me. So I was like, yeah, this is the business. Now, still to this day, I love this, this shape. I think it's a really nice shape for arpeggios. If you're kind of wanting, you know, if, if your other guitar player in the band is giving it this kind of... And you want to bring, you know, bring that kind of edge to it. And, I, you know, you hear it all the time. Um, it's just a great chord shape, okay? So the first way to play it is, is the way that it's traditionally played, which is your first finger is covering the root, and then you kind of create that classic open chord D minor with the rest of your fingers. So your third finger, in this instance, is on the ninth fret, and that's the fifth, so root, fifth, then root again, 
And if you've done the major cage course, you'll know that that is literally the chord that we use for the major, the A major. And then we add the, the major third in here. But in this instance, we don't want the major third, we want the flat third. So again, if you already know your majors, it's quite easy to change between them. So we've got root, fifth, root, flat third. Okay, so it's quite a nice little practice to go between the major and the minor. Or you might want to just kind of solidify that concept. All right? So that's the first way to play it. I would highly recommend learning it like that. Um, you can also, of course, do an inversion of that. So literally just do the, that's the other very common thing that you'll see. Just as if you were playing a, a D minor open chord just like that, but of course it's an inversion. It's a second inversion, because it starts on the fifth. A first inversion will start on the flat third, but it's the fifth, so it's a second inversion. Root, flat third. Fifth, root, flat third, okay? Like that. So we've got that way to play it, or this way to play it, okay? Either way, sound really, really good. The key thing is that you can find it, so I would use that to locate it, with my root note there, and then if I wanted to just do the top three strings, I'd just do that, because of course it's quite comfortable. So there's my, there's my chord, okay? And the arpeggio that we're gonna do with that will look like this. Okay, so a nice, simple arpeggio. Now you can expand that, and I'll walk you through that in a second but we don't need to. We kind of want to have each arpeggio of its own for its own purpose. And for me, this is only the real bit that I'd only ever use of this arpeggio. If anything, if I wanted to go lower, I'd join it into the first arpeggio. Okay, but we'll get to that in a second. So we've got the root, then we've got the flat third. Because remember, when we do these kind of arpeggios, they need to be in that order. It can't just go root to fifth, that would feel too much like the chord. This is the arpeggio, so root, fifth, sorry, root, flat, third. Then with my second finger, I'm gonna play the fifth, third finger, the root, and first finger, the flat third. So you can really just practice that. You can literally just put that on loop. Whichever fingers you end up using, whether it's first the little finger or third finger, just put that on loop. As with all arpeggios like this, whenever you're doing one note per string, you wanna kind of do economy picking. So down, 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 or up, up, up. And whenever you're doing uh, two notes on a string, you're doing alternate picking. So down, up, down, up. So if you just watch that right hand, I'm doing down, up, down, 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 up, and then up, up, down. And in fact, what I might actually end up doing, if I was just rolling through it back and forth like that, is I would probably do down, up, down, down, up, you know, I'd go deliberately over the string and back up so that I'm in the right direction to come back through it like that, okay? Okay, so there we have the chord and the arpeggio. And this is the first thing I want you guys to learn. Now, if you really like the arpeggios and you want to kind of expand on that, then rather than doing it in this shape, which you could in theory do, because you then go, then that's your root, then you go to your fifth, and then you go to your flat third, okay, which is exactly what you want to do. And then to get to the A, of course, you'd have to jump back up. Okay, but what you would actually could do here is if you wanted to expand that, so from the root, fifth, flat third, and then I'd come back down to that root note there. Okay, so back into the, the E shape, okay? So if you really like the idea of the arpeggio at the top and then wanted to continue that, you could do that, okay? You'll see a lot of players kind of opt for that movement across. You know, it might even go up to there. 
rather than the move more laterally just down and up. Okay, so it's, that's really up to you. I just wanted to kind of throw it out there as a little extra, just, just for you guys who might be interested in that. But there we have it. We've got our chord and we've got our arpeggio. And those are the things I want you to have a little play around with. If you can, put it to a drum beat perhaps, or just play over a loop of the A minor, you know, then you can actually start to just play around with this. Hear those tonalities, hear the difference when you play that, um, if I play the minor third, the root, the fifth, You can just have a good old fashioned play around with that and see what kind of sticks what you like. So have a go with that and next time we'll add those scales. Okay guys, so that's it for this lesson. Now if you want to see the next lesson along in the series then click the big old box that will pop up here and if you want to start from the beginning of the playlist here on YouTube, click the box here. Also, please do remember to like the video, subscribe to our channel for all of these wonderful courses, as well as leave us a comment. We really do our best to get back to every single question that you guys have about the course. I'll see you next time.